Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, a hatchback from Kia, the Picanto 1.2 EX Automatic, and a subcompact sedan from Honda, the City RS. Plus, a feature to feature comparison of two subcompact sedans, the Suzuki Desire GL Plus versus the Toyota Vios GCVT. On Autopedia, we'll talk about a vehicle's shock absorbers, and together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have Ford Philippines new managing director's virtual meetup with the local motor media as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Auto Focus, and we'll be right back after this short break. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now! Live Extra with the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Kia. The subcompact hatchback segment now offers great options for those looking for nimble vehicles perfect for city driving. This edition of Car Review takes a look at one, the Kia Picanto 1.2EX Automatic. The Kia Picanta has been around for a long time now in the local market. An affordable subcompact hatchback with a lot going for it. A rev-happy engine, size perfect for driving in narrow streets or congested main thoroughfares. Roomy cabin and with enough standard interior features to keep up with the competition. But over years, the competition has become tougher with more entries in this segment and with each new rollout from competing brands and models, the ante has gone up in terms of tech upgrade for conveniences, amenities, driver assist, and safety tech. Does the latest top-of-the-line edition of the Kia Picanto have enough to call and or make a re-raise? The Kia Picanto 1.2 EX Automatic is 3,595mm long, 1,595mm wide, and 1,495mm tall with a 2,400mm wheelbase and a ground clearance of 151mm. There is no mistaking that the Picanto is a Kia. It's got all the design cues, making the latest generation Kias modern and stylish. As adapted to the Picanto, these design cues give the small hatchback an edgy vibe. The Kia Picanto features multi-reflector halogen headlamps, front fog lamps, body color front and rear bumpers, intermittent front windshield wipers, mesh-type grille with silver trim, pole-type antenna, 
Rear Window Defog Rear Spoiler with Integrated High Mount Stop Lamp and Standard Rear Combination Lamp The Kia Picanto 1.2 EX rides on 17565 R14 tires wrapped around 14-inch alloy rim it comes with remote keyless entry that gets you into a surprisingly roomy interior for five adults in comfortable fabric seats. Both driver and front passenger seats slide and recline. The rear bench seat for three and splits and folds 60-40 to provide room for luggage when needed. The Picanto has a well-laid-out dashboard with silver trim. The instrument panel features analog speedometer, commuter, and fuel gauge, and 2.6-inch LCD for the trip meter. The three-spoke polyurethane steering wheel tilts to help driver find a good driving posture and comes with controls for the audio and Bluetooth function. It also comes with a now mostly standard power windows and door locks, a large glove box, console box, power outlet, and air conditioning. Looming large on the center of the dashboard is the infotainment system which comes with a 7-inch touchscreen, AM FM radio, MP3 with USB and aux in ports, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with voice control and 4 speakers plus 2 tweeters. The top of the line local Picanto is powered by a 1248cc 4-cylinder gasoline engine with multi-point injection made into a 4-speed automatic transmission. The engine generates 84 PS at 6,000 RPM and 122 Nm of torque at 4,000 RPM. One needs to get up to the rev counter to get max torque to drive the front wheels. But the Picanto 1.2 EX Automatic has a curb weight of just 980 kg which still makes for a zippy drive on city streets. With one of the longer wheel bases in its segments and a suspension system using front McPherson struts with stabilizer and coupled torsion beam axle in the rear, the Picanto handles humps well and is well poised around curves and turns. It has a minimum turning radius of just 4.7 meters which is perfect for narrow secondary roads in crowded urban areas. Finding parking space is not much of a problem for the Picanto, even more so for the 1.2 EX Automatic which is also equipped with rear camera with static guidelines to help with parking in tight spaces. The brake system featuring front discs and rear drums performs its job with confidence with an anti-lock brake system added for greater safety. Other safety features in the Picanto EX variants are dual airbags, four three-point seat belts with driver and front seat passengers benefiting from pre-tensioners child seat anchors, and child locks. The EX also gets anti-theft system with engine immobilizer. Kia has equipped the Picanto 1.2 EX automatic with much of the features buyers want to find in entry-level sedans and hatchbacks. But are they enough to draw buyers at price points it must maintain to compete? The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven-seater in style. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Humans choose more challenging paths to go up and over our biggest obstacle. Ourselves. New Ford Ranger FX4 Max. Live the Ranger life. The Mitsubishi.
Mitsubishi Strata Athlete. Unleash the athlete. Welcome back to Auto Focus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. There's a new man on the driver's seat of Mitsubishi Motors Philippines Corporation or MMPC. It's Takeshi Hara, who just last April arrived in the country to take on the role of MMPC Executive Vice President and Assistant to the President and CEO. On July 1, 2021, Tarasan formally took over the role of MMPC President and CEO, succeeding Mutsuhiro Oshikiri, who leaves his post after four years of successfully maintaining Mitsubishi as a strong number two automotive brand in the Philippines. During his stint at MMPC, Ashikiri-san implemented structural reforms to strengthen the company and oversaw several milestones including the successful launch of the Mitsubishi Expander, the number one selling small MPV, and the relaunch of the iconic Mitsubishi L300. Prior to his being assigned to the Philippines, Harasan was president and CEO of Mitsubishi Motor Sales Caribbean Incorporated, Mitsubishi Motor Corporation's subsidiary and distributor in Puerto Rico. He joined Mitsubishi in 1993 and has risen through the ranks while gaining experiences in various business fields such as plant operation, corporate planning, sales and after sales for MMPC in Japan, and several other countries including Thailand. Now as head of MMPC, Harasan aims to continue to bring Filipino customers the best products and services as well as strengthen the company's productivity and sustainable growth in the Philippines. SPX Philippines Incorporated, aka Shopee Express, has added Isuzu NMR85H aluminum van trucks to its fleet of delivery vehicles. We are turning over the first 15 units of Isuzu NMR85H aluminum van to SPX Philippines or Shopee Express, the integrated logistics service of Shopee Philippines. The Isuzu vans are expected to bolster the integrated logistics service of Shopee, one of the leading e-commerce platforms in the Philippines. According to Isuzu Philippines Executive Vice President Sujiro Sakoda, with the NMR's tried and tested DNA, Shopee will be able to achieve the goal of safe and seamless deliveries in the fastest time possible. During the official turnover of the Isuzu vans to Shopee, Isuzu Philippines Sales Division Head Joseph Bautista said Isuzu is looking forward to contributing to a more enjoyable e-commerce experience for Shopee sellers and customers through the NMR's proven reliability and versatility on the road. Martin Yu, Shopee Philippines director, said that with a brand new middle mile fleet of durable and dependable NMR trucks from Isuzu, they're able to operate efficiently and effectively as they deliver goods from sellers to buyers. We would like to invite all those watching to visit any Isuzu dealers nationwide to learn more about our range of trucks and how each are made differently to fulfill every time of business requirement. Maraming salamat and keep safe. Amid a highly competitive entry-level subcompact sedan market, Suzuki Philippines has upgraded the Sayas with a newly designed exterior and refurbished interior while providing the same reliable driving performance. The new Suzuki Sayas now comes with a more stylish chrome grille, new bumper design, and LED headlamps and fog lights. In-cabin upgrades include elegant fabric seats, a refined instrument panel, and a black interior with silver accents. The Sayas also now features an upgraded infotainment system with 8-inch display, soft-touch button, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. It is powered by a 1.4-liter petrol engine rated at 91 horsepower. It also now comes with a reverse camera, dual airbags, and anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution. Priced at only 888,000 pesos, the new Suzuki Sayas is available in mineral gray metallic, pure white pearl, and super black pearl. The new Land Rover Defender 90 is now available in the local market. Units of the Land Rover Defender 90 are now available for viewing and test drives at the All British Cars showroom along Edza Greenells and at the BGC Boutique showroom at the 5th Avenue Quarter 24th Street. The new Defender 90 with its short wheelbase and minimal front and rear overhang that provide excellent off-road geometry is touted as the most capable Land Rover ever made. Designed to excel both on and off the road, the Defender 90 is powered by an Ingenium D240 twin turbocharged diesel powertrain made into an 8-speed automatic transmission and a class-leading all-wheel drive system. The minimum ground clearance of 226 mm and maximum weighting depth of 850 mm are complemented by a new weight sensing system to give drivers complete confidence in crossing deep rivers. It also comes with clear sight ground view technology that allows drivers to see areas hidden by the bonnet and ahead of the front wheels on the central touchscreen. The new Defender 90 is also equipped with Rand Lover's PV Pro infotainment system with a 10-inch touchscreen display. 
Coventry Motors Corporation sold authorized distributor of Jaguar and Land Rover vehicles to the country says the Defender 90 is available with four accessory packs, Urban, Country, Adventure, and Explorer, that provides specially selected enhancements to personalize ownership. Prices start at 5.69 million pesos for the Defender 90 with Urban Pack. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Da, da, da. Make long distance easy with the Mirage G4. Be part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Every time I'm on the road, I can expect high performance from Phoenix Fuels. Now with Pulse Technology, delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on Head to Head. In this edition of Head to Head, we pit the Suzuki Desire GL Plus AGS against the Toyota Vios G CVT in a spec-to-spec -spec comparison. It seems that every year, more and more subcompact sedans are entering the local market. And every year, there are upgrades of models already in the market, which is good for buyers who now have a lot of options that would fit every kind of need, want, or budget. Like the Suzuki Desire GL Plus AGS and the Toyota Vios G CVT 4-door, 5-seater subcompact sedans. The Suzuki Desire GL Plus is 3,995mm long, 1,735mm wide, and 1,515mm tall, with a 2,450mm long wheelbase. Standard exterior features in the Desire GL Plus include body-colored outside door mirrors with integrated turn signals that power adjust and fold, intermittent windshield wipers with washer, and front and rear mud flaps, and halogen multi-reflector headlamps. The GL Plus also features body-colored bumper, black grille with chrome garnish, and front fog lamps. The Toyota Vios GCVT stands 4,425mm long, 1,730mm wide, and 1,475mm tall, and with a 2,550mm wheelbase. The Vios GCVT exterior gets 3-tier LED headlamps with LED daytime running lights with line guide, and the Vios GCVT gets 3-tier LED headlamps with LED daytime running lights with line guide, LED rear combination lamps, color-keyed power retractable side view mirrors with integrated turn signal lights, chrome grip type outside door handles, 16-inch alloy wheels, 
and fin-type antenna. The Suzuki Desire GL Plus comes with fabric seats. The front seats slide and recline. The driver's seat also features height adjust. The rear seat has a fold-down center armrest with cup holders. A tiltable three-spoke urethane steering wheel features controls for audio and hands-free phone. Interior comfort and convenience features include remote entry, power door locks and windows, front and rear door pockets, front console box with cup holders, glove box, 12-volt accessory sockets, air conditioning with heater, pollen filter, and rear vents. The contemporary dash features an instrument panel with speedometer and tachometer, as well as displays for temperature, fuel consumption, and driving range. The GL Plus comes with a 7-inch touchscreen infotainment audio unit with AM, FM radio, USB and Bluetooth connectivity, micro SD card slot for audio and video files, GPS navigation, aux in and front and rear speakers. The Toyota VSG CVT comes with smart entry system and push-button start, speed sensing power door locks and power windows, an automatic air conditioning system, power retractable outer mirrors and follow me home light control system. Inside, a flat floor provides lots of legroom for rear passengers. The instrumentation on the dash features Optron gauges and a 4.2-inch TFT multi-information display. The leather-wrapped steering wheel on a tilt-adjustable column features controls for the audio and infotainment system, which comes with 7-inch touchscreen display, CDs and MP3 player, Bluetooth, voice command, USB and auxiliary input, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, SDL and 6 speakers. The Desire GL Plus is powered by a K12M inline 4 gasoline engine with multi point fuel injection that generates 82 PS at 6,000 revolutions per minute and 113 Nm of torque at 4,200 RPM. Made it to Suzuki's AGS or Auto Gear Shift system, which is also known as an automatic manual transmission. The Desire suspension uses McPherson struts with coil springs in front and torsion beam with coil springs in the rear. The brake system features ventilated disc in front and leading and trailing drums in the rear. The Vios G is powered by a 1,496cc 4-cylinder 16-valve double overhead cam engine with dual VVTi and electronic fuel injection that generates 107 PS at 6,000 revolutions per minute and 114 Nm of torque at 4,200 RPM. The engine is mated to a continuously variable transmission or CVT which comes with eco and sport drive modes as well as paddle shifters. The VIA suspension system uses front McPherson struts and torsion beams in the rear. The brakes in the G variants use front ventilated and rear solid discs. The Desire GL Plus also comes with driver assist and safety systems including hill hold control, electronic stability program, anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, and rear parking sensors. Other safety and security features include dual airbags, 3-point ELR seat belts for 4 and 2-point lap belt for 1, 2 ISOFIX child seat anchors and child seat tether anchorages, child-proof rear door locks, side impact door beams, engine immobilizer, high mount stop lamp. The G variants of the Vios comes with the vehicle stability control, hill start assist, an anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, as well as a back monitor. Other safety features include airbags for driver and front seat passenger, side airbags, plus a curtain shield and knee protection for the driver, 3-point ELR seat belts with pretensioner and force limiter for the driver and front seat passenger, 3-point seat belts for each of the three passengers in the rear, child lock protection, and high mount stop lamp. The VSG variants also come with the Toyota Vehicle Security System with alarm and immobilizer. The Suzuki Desire GL Plus is listed on the Suzuki Philippines website at 708,000 pesos, while the Toyota Vios 1.5G CVT is listed at 970,000 pesos. Which will buyers think has more bang for the buck?
Isuzu D-Max into new heights. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Ilustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Ilustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Ilustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Humans choose more challenging paths to go up and over our biggest obstacle, ourselves. New Ford Ranger FX4 Max. Live the Ranger life. Be part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. There's a new man at the head of Ford Philippines, Michael Breed. In this special feature, he explains his priorities in his new role coming to Manila. Three weeks into his new job as managing director of Ford Philippines, Michael Breen met with the local motor media via Zoom. On Breen's agenda is to introduce himself to members of the media, explain what he brings to Ford Philippines in terms of his near three decades of experience and accomplishments at Ford, and lists his priorities as he takes over the seat left by P.K. Uwashankar. Before his new appointment to lead Ford Philippines, Sabrina has had success in various roles, including as brand content and alliance manager, where he led the launch and execution of a groundbreaking partnership with the Home Shopping Network. Actually, one of the, the, the most interesting experiences I had there was a Home Shopping Network integration. And, and what we did was we featured product insights and then we offered special pricing for, for home shopping network customers. And, and it was something that just hadn't been done at that point. And um, it was a great opportunity for us to leverage a different platform while bringing insights into the Ford brand and our features uh, on, on specific products. As truck and SUV launch manager in Ford Asia Pacific and later on, as marketing communications launch manager, Breen helped bring about the successful introduction of the Ranger Raptor, something that Breen lists as his top three accomplishments at Ford. And the next one is really just kind of tied to my integrated work on the Ranger Raptor launch, uh, marketing launch. And, and this, is, this occurred actually in, here in Asia Pacific in 2018 while I was still in Shanghai. Um, and I would say you've probably seen much of the work that I did on, on the Ranger Raptor because I was involved in those production shoots like many of you are now. We did the planning, the coordination, bringing the Raptor um, actually to New Zealand where we did the production shoot. Um, and and it's, it's been great to see that in reality and, and have it become very real in the markets, uh, especially in the Philippines where Ranger Raptor enjoys, you know, enjoys just a huge following because we were able to, to get it into the market. As Managing Director of Ford Asia Pacific Direct Markets, his job right before his Philippine assignment, Breen supported distributors to grow Ford's presence in 25 countries. 
resulting in 15% increase in sales volume and 5.6 points improvement in market share. The third big accomplishment for me, and, and this, this might feel a little different because it's not so much about metrics and vehicle sales, um, but it, it's, it's, to me, it, it's as important, if not, as, if not more important. And, and it's really about making a positive impact with the people, the teams, and the dealers that I have the benefit of working with. His experience and accomplishments in various roles at Ford give Michael Breen confidence in tackling his newest assignment that takes him to the Philippines. I feel really good and, and comfortable and confident that my experience over the last 28 years ha have set me up so effectively to come to the Philippines and, and work with our dealer partners and with our, our FGP team to figure out how we take Ford to the next level in the Philippines. In taking Ford Philippines to the next level of success, what are Breen's priorities? When I talk about the, the top three priorities for the Philippines, I think the first thing that I need to make sure to bring to the table is continue, you know, kind of leverage our business continuity. And, and by that, I, what I mean is don't mess up the progress that's already been made by, by the people who are here before me, uh, you know, between Bert, Uma, and the Philippines team here and the dealer group, they've already set a really great course for us in so many areas. And in, in those areas include things like 4 by 4 pickup segment leadership, a small SUV segment leadership. Number two on, on the three priorities for me are really kind of taking the opportunity in our global footprint and, and find ways to leverage the best parts of the Ford Motor Company global initiatives to bring those programs to the Philippines to set up Ford's future in the market. Breen broadly hinted to at what is Ford's future. We're building the infrastructure in the Philippines to be able to welcome and bring these products and, and get the most out of the capabilities that, um, that these vehicles can offer in the Philippines. And certainly, I'm sure this is on everyone's mind as well, is figure out a way to lay the foundation in the Philippines or leverage the foundation that already exists and expand it for, for the future of EV integration. Priority number three for Breen is raising the level of consumer's experience. And third, and, and don't take the, the third item by any means to mean that it, it's, it's not the top priority. It's all about the consumer experience. You know, we have to figure out how to fully implement and integrate in the consumer experience, and as well as kind of after after sales activities, and 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 that has that's not just going to happen by Ford. This happens in partnership with our dealers. Uh, we need to understand better how to embrace and keep customers at the forefront of really keeping you know, or treating customers like family. Even before arriving in the Philippines, Breen is virtually hitting the ground running with the launch of the new Ranger Raptor X and the Ranger Wildtrak 4x4 with power roller shutter. We are going to be bringing the new Ranger Raptor X to the Philippines. And, and we're really just so excited to have this. And it's really, it's a limited edition Ranger Raptor that's going to cater to a subgroup of performance pickup enthusiasts we're really kind of into aesthetic modifications. So it's kind of a niche group that, that will really, you know, leverage and take advantage of that. And Raptor X, we fully expect to turn more heads on the road. Breen believes he'll be a good fit for his new role at Ford Philippines. Um, the other thing is, I think everyone will know, and, and I understand that I'll, I'll be a really good fit in the Philippines. I hear it's more fun in the Philippines. So I'm, I'm counting on, on you all and, and certainly the, the country in, ge in general to, to fully experience how it is more fun in the Philippines. And uh, Diane and I just can't wait to get there. Ford Philippines seems to be in good hands with the arrival of Breed. We'll find out soon enough if he will keep to his list of priorities.
think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Be part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Long distance easy with the Mirage G4. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. It's been more than 20 years since the first launch of the city, a subcompact sedan which was introduced in the country as the affordable entry level Honda. This edition of Car Review takes a look at the top-of-the-line variant of the latest iteration of the city. The Honda City, the four-door subcompact sedan, has gone through several iterations since it was first launched locally in the middle of the 90s. Back then, it was a Spartan subcompact sedan whose main selling point was that it was the affordable Honda, the next best thing if you can't afford the Civic. Today, one can hardly describe the city as Spartan, but it can be described as a mature sedan with sporty inclinations, especially the variant with the RS for Rally Sport Tag. The Honda City 1.5 RS CVT at 4,553mm long, 1,748mm wide, and 1,467mm tall presents a sleek and sporty silhouette on the road. The sporty aspect is enhanced by the RS Design front and rear bumper, the high gloss black grille with RS emblem, trunk spoiler, shark fin antenna, 16 inch RS Design aluminum alloy wheels. The side mirror with integrated turn signals folds and adjusts electronically. It also comes with full LED headlight with auto off timer, LED fog light with sporty garnish, body color door handles. Intermittent front wipers with washer. The sporty character is carried over into the cabin. It comes with black and red trim interior colors. It also comes with sport pedals. One gets into the city using the one push start with smart entry and remote engine start system, which just means one can get into and start the city with key fob and pocket. The seats upholstered in leather and suede material are comfortable. The front seats slide and recline, with the driver also benefiting from a seat height adjuster. Combined with a three-spoke leather-wrapped steering wheel that tilts and telescopes, this allows for getting the preferred driver position. The steering wheel also features switches and buttons for cruise control, audio and hands-free telephone with voice recognition, and paddle shifters. The shift knob also comes in leather. Other comfort and convenience features includes power windows, two cup holders and four bottle holders, and two 12-volt accessory sockets. 
The automatic air conditioning system features rotary knobs, digital display, and rear ventilation. The city is not to be left behind in the connectivity race. The top-of-the-line city comes with an infotainment system that features an 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, weblink, Bluetooth, two USB ports, and plays through eight speakers. The Honda City is a fun drive. This starts from a 1,498cc Rev Happy inline four-cylinder gasoline engine with double overhead cam, program fuel injection, and IV tech. This engine generates 121 PS at 6,600 revolutions per minute and 145 Nm of torque at 4,300 RPM. The engine on the City 1.5 RS drives the front wheels via a continuously variable transmission. Keeping the speed in control is a brake system featuring front ventilated discs and rear drums. Electric power steering provides a good balance of ease and feedback. The suspension system features front McPherson struts and torsion beams in the rear. Honda is also generous in providing the latest in technology for safety and security in the City 1.5 RS CVT, which already features the G-Con body structure. These include dual, front, side, and curtain airbags. 3-point seat belts for 5, child lock and isofix child seat anchor, speed setting auto door lock, and security system with alarm and immobilizer. It also comes with vehicle stability assist with agile handling assist, hill start assist, anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, and emergency stop signal. Parking is also made easier with a multi-view rear camera. The city has come a long way from being the Spartan and affordable Honda of the 90s. It is still an affordable Honda, but it certainly is not a Spartan. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney, and today we'll talk about shock absorbers. So this is your vehicle's shock absorber. As the name implies, it absorbs the shock of the bad roads that we have here in the Philippines. Now, old timers will ask you and then, ano ba yung shock mo? Fluid or gas? Wala nang fluid shock ngayon. They're all gas shocks. But here's the thing. Inside here is both gas and fluid. It's called gas shock because up here, there is pressurized nitrogen gas here. But the shock absorption, it's still done by oil, it's still a fluid. It's just that the old old shocks don't have any pressurized gas and it's just fluid. So now, it's both gas and fluid. All shocks right now are like that. As you can imagine, this thing goes up and down to absorb the shock. This is actually called a McPherson strut, after, named after the guy who invented it. So what that simply means is that there is a basso here where the spring sits. This bolts on to the axle and the hub, and this bolts to the chassis. So the big question is, how do you know if sira na yung shocks mo? The easiest, fastest, and most sure way to find out, you have to take the shock out of the car to be able to tell if it's busted or not. So here we have two shocks. One is new, one is old. This one is busted, and I'll show you why. As you can see, it don't go up no more. Effectively, this thing is not absorbing any shock at all. And we compare it to a new shock. As you can see, it has to go up on its own and it has to go up pretty fast. If it doesn't go up this fast, it's also busted. Or dead or dying. New, old, dead, alive. You may have heard the old school advice also. You make kalog kalog the car to see if the shocks are okay. That is also not true, and I'll show you why. We have several cars here to demonstrate. The old school wisdom is, if it does that, that the shock is okay. No, not necessarily. Because what you're doing is just pushing down on the spring, and it just goes up. What makes the shock goes up is actually the spring. Then we have here another car. 
it doesn't go up or down. So what does that mean? The shock is busted? No, it's not. BMs are really like that. That's why the handling is good. Uh, here, we have a Fortuner. It bounces a lot more than the Ford Explorer. But is the shock dead? No, it's not. It's just really like that. <laughs> So that method doesn't really work. You cannot be certain if your suspension is good or bad just by doing the bounce test, no. Because every car behaves differently when you bounce it. So the only real way to know if your shock is good or bad is to have it taken out and then do the press test, what I just did. Ano magandang bilhin na shock? You can always, always buy OEM. You can go to the casa, buy whatever that they're selling, and then call it a day. It is, after all, the same spec as what you have. If you're looking for something cheaper, get one of these, KYB XLG. This is pretty much the same spec as the original shock, but of course at a cheaper price. And chances are, if you have a Japanese car, KYB has an application for it. So this is a front shock. This is a rear shock. This, I believe, is for a Honda Jazz. This, I believe, is for a Lancer. If you want to step up from something better, KYB also has this called a new SR Special. It looks exactly the same as the shock that's going to be taken out. The big difference is what's inside here. This one will actually give a better ride than what you have because, like I said, it's a shock absorber. It's better at absorbing the shock. And there are things that make it slightly better. A bigger and fatter shaft than the original one. The piston inside here is also better than the valving is also slightly different. And this one is built to take lowering springs if your ride is lowered. Because if you put lowering springs on a OEM shock, chances are in less than a year, your shock ain't gonna work no more as well. So might as well get a set of these. And for German cars, there's only one go-to brand. It's Bilstein, that's it. <laughs>So there, hopefully, you have now a better understanding of what your vehicle shock absorber does and how to spot if it's busted. That's our feature in Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your electronic magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.